da 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 Hello, everybody. Welcome to our review of episode four <laughs> of season two of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. I am joined, as always, by my best buddy in the whole world, Jason. Hi, Jason. Hi, everybody. So. Yeah, I'm one. I can't. I'm sorry. I, I forgot what we were going to do. Me too. Uh -huh. Who are you? I get uh -huh. it. I get the bit. I get it. It's a thing. I did a little thing. Um, no, no, seriously. So who the fuck are you? And what am I doing here? I don't know, but what I have this? the worst headache. <laughs> no, so we're going to review the new episode of Strange New Worlds. It's called Among the Lotus Eaters. You mean the, and... we almost got an Ortegas show? Almost? almost. <laughs> sort of, kind of, sort of. Or And um, I made a joke of this. Is this literally the writer saying, this is as far as we go with Ortegas? <laughs> she says it 19 times in the in the episode. My name I is... Fly the ship. I fly the ship. That's I it. I fly the ship. I fly the ship. Nothing and she does. else. I have no does. other story. Kind of a hint of she never gets to go on away missions. But yeah, yeah. So um, the Enterprise has returned to Rigel Seven, which mm -hmm. uh, which which eagle-eyed Trekkies will remember is the mission that was haunting Captain Pike during the cage. Yeah. Uh, when uh, Captain Pike was being what was sort of a little bit tormented by recent events that That's had his taken people place. got killed. Did. Yeah, his people got killed and the, the mission was a disaster and they barely made it out alive. That happened on Rigel 7. And Spock was bleeding out. And yeah. So now the Enterprise has called him a name. Yeah. His feelings hurt. Yeah, his people. Exactly. It was just a bad mission all around. Mm -hmm. So. Now they have to go back to Rigel 7 five years later because uh, some Starfleet ships came back for like a routine check-in from orbit and they took some pictures and there's a great big Starfleet symbol on one of the buildings and that's not supposed to be there. The natives aren't supposed to be putting up Starfleet shit. So Starfleet's Someone like- Someone trimmed the bushes to make it look like a Starfleet yeah, symbol. Yeah, so Starfleet's like, oh, Pike, you fucked up somehow. You better go, go back and fix go it. Go fix this somehow. Go down there and kill them bushes. Yeah, do whatever you need to do. Exactly. Trim the bushes, kill some people, whatever you need to do to take out the cultural contamination. So Pike says, okay. That's right. So so they go back to Rigel 7 and they're, yeah, what you mentioned a minute ago, there is, they're taking the, uh, the away team down. And at first it looks like Ortegas is on the away team. But then she gets told that, oh, actually, there's there's like a ring system around the planet that's really treacherous and the Enterprise is going to have to constantly be manually course corrected so that it doesn't like fly into a giant rock. So sorry, or Ortega, maybe you're... just not be in the giant rock formation uh, and just be outside no. of it or inside of, you know, not but yeah, just, not just well, be in the rocks. How about that? Well, the rocks are there and you got to deal with the rocks. Is, yeah, by is not my, being you know. in the rocks. <laughs> But the point is, Ortegas can't go on the on the away mission, and she's disappointed because she yeah, has she to could. stay and she fly could the park ship outside the rocks, and then fly her, the shuttle through the rocks. Right, but apparently that's not an option. Yeah, she's told she can't go. She can't go, and she's disappointed because she got dressed up to go on everything, and now and she's it's like, Spock's "Oh, I guess so. fault. it's all Spock's fault because Spock is the one who realized that she would have to stay." Mm -hmm. Um, and so then she kills Spock. Yeah, or they kiss. Well, they kiss, or everyone's in love both. with Spock on this show. First That's one, right. then the other, yeah. yeah. But so, so, so it's Pike and Doctor Mbenga. Well, I mean, she and... could kill him and then kiss him. That's pretty gross. Some people do it that way. I don't really think that's right, who, but some who, people do it that way. What do you mean some people? Very few people do it that way. Very, yeah, very few people, and they are rightly ostracized from the rest of society, but they exactly. do exist. Mm -hmm. That's okay. all I'm saying. Yeah. I'm not saying it's. I'm not saying like it that I approve of it. You make it sound like you know a bunch of dead uh, people like kissing dead people. You don't know who I know, okay? That's true. I don't know who you know. You don't know. You don't know who my friends are. A bunch um, of freaks. <laughs> I you look. I didn't know they were necrophiliacs until after I had already gotten to know them, and then by mm -hmm. then it was too late. You know, like mm -hmm. we until have so much else in common. Until they brought their significant other over for for dinner that party. Was, 
that was embarrassing, but at least I didn't have to set any extra places at the table. We know this is fake because you don't let people over to the house because you're a hermit. And you don't <laughs> yeah, like people. The, the idea of me attending a dinner party, much less throwing <laughs> one, is hilarious. Um, That's true. Anyway, I'd be like, it, I'd be like, how, how many other people are going to be there? Three. Count me up. Uh, so the doctor anyway, and what's yeah. and, La- and La- on and, and, and Pike. Yeah, and Pike. They, they all they fly a, a shuttlecraft down to the planet and they're dressed in, you know, like native clothes and they don't bring any technology with them because they've already contaminated the society enough. So they're like, we're not bringing any phasers. We're not bringing any tricorders. We're not bringing nothing. That's um, right. All, so they get. They, they start walking. They park the shuttle far Except enough away. Except I'm going to wear this him. necklace because you jumped over the yes. thing. The oh, thing, that's right. That's Pike important. Pike and his girlfriend. What's her face from what the other plug Yes, say? Captain, Captain, Captain Battelle. Captain Battelle. And they they're over. Up. They're trying to have a dinner. And then she's got to talk to the Admiral. And then and then Pike is all like, maybe we shouldn't. I'm jeopardizing your career because of the thing with with Una. And yeah. uh he basically cock box himself at any action with her. And they're like, well, maybe we should stop. And after I gave you this necklace and he's like, fine, that works for me because in 10 years, I'm going, I'm going to be a crispy critter sitting in a chair. And is that in the future? He doesn't say this. He, he doesn't, doesn't say that to her, but yeah, this doesn't even come up, but you know, we know, yeah. we know. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, so so he broke up with Captain Patel right before they they go down to the planet. They park yeah. the shuttlecraft far but enough away from the settlement. But he's wearing that necklace that she he has, Yeah, because he's a sentimental guy, you know. He has a heart. He feels bad. But anyway, so they're walking to the, the no, palace. New Orleans. And La'an. Hmm? Nothing. It's an old, it's, it's an old-timey <laughs> song. Forget it. Forget I said anything. Well, anyway. So they're walking to the palace, and Good La'an song. gets a headache. You heard it? No. Yeah, La'an gets a headache, and, and then she blacks when she, out for a little while. And she blacks out, and she's like, "And when she's like, oh, we've been walking for six hours, and I completely missed it. That's weird. Anyway, let's keep going." Yeah, they don't um, abort the mission and and leave, right. despite the fact that she clearly indicates she doesn't remember six hours of something. The doctor's mm-hmm. like, "Oh, she'll be fine." Yeah. And yeah, then the same thing right. happens to the doctor. And then eventually the same thing happens to Pike. They get like, like, a, um, uh, uh, they hear a, a ringing in their ears and they get a headache and then like they're confused. They, they're disoriented. They have missing time. And when they finally get to the palace, they walk into the palace and it turns out the king of these people that live on Rigel 7 is a member of Pike's landing party that he thought was dead. Dun, dun, dun. And he's like, you but left it, me here to be dead. And I was yeah. dead. And you didn't even come and check my body to see if I still yeah. had a pulse. Because and you're not supposed to trust your officers when they tell you so-and-so is dead. That you should, <laughs> I should be angry at someone else, not you. But I am because you should have come and at least poked my body with a stick. To see if he I ought, was alive, and you did do ought to be, it. He, he ought to be angry at that old fart doctor that was the doctor on the Enterprise back then. No, the old fart Dr. doctor, Dr. Boyce. Oh yeah, he is the previous yeah, doctor. The, the, yeah, because the yeah, this 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 series takes place after the Cage. So the yeah, the old fart okay. doctor was the doctor before. Old fart doctor is that what we're doctor, calling him? Doctor Boyce, I like Dr. old Boyce. fart doctor. Doctor yeah. Boyce, whose whose medical bag has a martini kit in it. And we were That's making right. fun of Bones, Dr. McCoy, <laughs> for being a fucking alcoholic. Dr. Boyce was like, I got you covered as far as medical Bones. alcoholism. My arm is gone. Well, nothing a little sorry and brandy can't fix. <laughs> Let me pour you a bourbon there, Jim. It'll help I'm, you. I'm bleeding it out. <laughs> well, this will make you not mind as much. <laughs> well, then you better drink it fast. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, anyway okay. they get so they captured. get to the palace. It's the guy from the landing party, and he's like, "I'm the king now, and you're gonna go outside, and this planet changes you, and you're gonna forget everything soon." Ha ha ha! You suck. And so they put him in a cage. They put him in a cage, and they and they wake up or they come out of their their next episode, and they've all started to forget. They can't remember who forgotten. they are. They yeah. yeah, they can't. They can't remember their names. They can't remember who the other people are. They're like, "What are we doing here? Who are you? Who am I? What's going on?" Meanwhile, um, the same thing's happening up on the ship. That's right. The people on the Enterprise are experiencing the same thing, and you know that's going to be a problem. 
And Nurse yeah. Chapel says, oh, we're forgetting everything except certain things. Convenient, huh? Yeah, except like simple things that we like sort of innately know how to do. Like she says, That's like right. because she's a because she's a physician, like she can treat like simple wounds and stuff, but she couldn't do like a complex surgery or anything. Right. Um, and then Spock you know. or Una says, let's leave. And then they nope, leave. Nobody and says they that. No, they, they should leave and they get better. They forget to leave before they have a chance to leave. Uh huh. But they say, oh, no, that's what's happening. And it's probably happening double time for the people down on the planet. Yeah. So and it let's is. beam them up and leave. How? No, how they don't do, do that. It? They don't do that. So so anyway, down on the planet, they 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 let him out of the cage and Pike and Laon and Mbengi they meet get a put guy. to work. They yeah, that's right. They, they they meet a nice old guy Named. who is like, I can't remember. Yeah, neither do I. <laughs> Appropri- no. Appropriately enough. Old although, forgetful Jim and forget. Although he, like, I can't, and I can't, I wish I could remember the name of the actor who plays him because he he he's in a ton of stuff and he's always great. And I can't remember his name, but he's he's fantastic. I'm sorry. Um, the world's largest go kart just crashed. I'm not quite sure what's going on. If you guys hear that, there's like a. I, I don't know. An ultralight just crashed into the house next to us. I don't know. The world's largest go-kart, so just like a car. <laughs> no, but it only has a one-stroke engine, so... Oh, sure. So A giant so, yeah. one-stroke engine. A, 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 a humongous one-stroke engine. A single piston, nine stories tall. It's massive. It's massive. Anyway, um, anyway old, so old yeah. forgetful Jim helps yeah. them along and says Yeah, he takes them to well they first they, well first they, they work and then Pike realizes, oh shit, wait a minute, we're not like the other people because I don't have rough workman's hands. I have soft, right. supple, I have well-conditioned soft hands. hands. I've been counting yeah. money all my life. And, yeah. and everybody everybody else has tattoos except for the three of us. And I feel That's like right. I know these two. I don't remember them, but I know that we came here together and something's yeah. going on and we don't belong here. And also, I just noticed there's only two guards and there's like 10 of us. So to hell That's with this. Right. And and he starts a fight and he knocks out one of the guards. And then La'an is like, that looks like fun. And she knocks out the but other we guard. Set that up, she gets- we set up what's going on on the planet. There are people who get to forget. And then there are the people who don't forget. There's, there's, there's the haves and the have nots. There's the upper class and the lower class. There's the people that live in the field that do all the work. And then mm-hmm. there's the people that live in the palace who somehow get to keep their memories. And everybody's That's like, I wonder right. what that, I wonder how that and works. On this Whatever. Snow covered planet. They somehow have food. Yes, that they, they it's grow. from the mountains. They go to the mountains. The mountains are covered with snow. What the hell are you talking yeah, it's, about? It's on the other side of the mountains. Okay, whatever. They have the fields and the, the, the but trees. They go, they, but they've been sent to go bang on rocks with a, for no reason they can't with, a, with a hammer and yeah. saw some logs that come from the no trees that we saw. Somewhere, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, they're just the logs are left over from when they cut all the trees down. They're still working oh. their way through. But anyway, okay, so so Pike so so Pike and Laon take out the guards, but one of the guards injures Laon, and now she's really like she's got a cut across her, her stomach. Like and a she, carp. Yeah, <laughs> and she's like, "Oh, I'm probably going to die soon if this isn't fixed." And and Benga's like, "I think I'm maybe a doctor, but I don't remember how to help her, and I don't have the equipment to help her." And Pike's like, "Okay, let's go to your yurt, old helpful man." So the old helpful man, old forgetful old Jim, forgetful Sam, I'm forgetful old, Sam, <laughs> old forgetful Sam. He takes him to his yurt. And he's like, look at my totem pole. It has all the information you'll ever need. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. the totem pole says that they have a magic coffin in the palace where everybody's memories are kept. And Pike says, that's where we need to go to get our memories back so we he can also, figure out who we are. Sam also says, let her die. Yeah, you'll just forget about her, her anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, just let her die in peace. And also mm-hmm. don't give me back my memories because I, I don't know what my memories are, but I know they're sad and I know that I'm missing people No, and I he, don't want to remember. He's afraid they might be sad. Yes, well, he, he, he suspects that they are because he, they all have tattoos and their tattoos tell them like who they are and what their history is. That's right, and because he, they he use is, the juice of a vagina fruit that he just yes. keeps around him all the time he, well you know just in case you need it and uh and he, but his ta- he has blacked out all of his tattoos so he doesn't right. remember as much as all he, he knows is would. that his name is zach no zach is the starfleet guy all he knows is that in, his the, name in, the, is in the palace not zach i don't remember his name but uh 
No, Luke. I'm, His name is Luke. I Luke. just remembered. His name is Luke. His name is Luke. Good old forgetful Luke. Good old and, forgetful Luke. And the captain goes, we're going to that palace. And we're going to get that basket of, of memories. And we're, we got yeah. to because we got to save La'an. And so we're going to go. And so the, the, meanwhile, the ship is God's uh, problems because no one remembers anything. Nobody remembers how to do anything. And they're the all just kind of wandering the halls. Wandering around. And now the ship is running into asteroids, which freaks out which freaks out Ortegas for a little yeah. while. Yeah. But then she stands up and she says, I am the pilot. And she says it 15 yeah. times. Well, because the computer reminds her she, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, she says she, she's like kind of, and you, you mentioned what we were watching it. Like imagine how, how, what kind of a day the computer is having. Cause everybody must be asking the computer, these kinds of questions. Where's yeah. my room? Who am Who I? What am you? I doing here? What is this? <laughs> Where are we? And the computer's just asking all of these inane questions. Yeah. So the computer eventually interprets one Drifts of Ortega's a large, a large asteroid so it can destroy itself because it can't take it. <laughs> like, I can't, can't take, take this, this anymore. Uh, but anyway, eventually Ortega's gets reminded by the computer that uh, of her name and her job on the ship. And so mm -hmm. she's like, I am Erica Ortega's and I fly the ship. And she repeats that also, to herself Spock over and over again. Also, gave everybody a pad. Yeah, with their, with their, their bio on it. Right. Yeah. So in case you forget, this will tell you who you are. So she, she remembers who she is and what her job is, and she gets to the, the bridge again, and she takes her station, and she manages to uh, fly the ship to safety. To that, find yeah, it, find which it. is what they should have done an hour ago. But well, they, they did it. it. So are you however, happy? However long ago it was. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, and she flies the ship away from 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 the planet. And yeah. meanwhile, Pike and Laon and Mbengo. Well, Laon has to stay behind because her injury is eventually gets to the point where she just can't move out anymore. all yeah. over the place. So, so Mbenga and Pike get close to the palace, and then Mbenga gets shot, and he's like, "I'm okay, but I can't move, or I, I I'm, you know, I can't." He says, "I'm, I'm okay, but I can't." Say, say, it's nothing, but I can't put my weight on it, yeah. which does, which means it's not nothing. You've been injured so badly really, on your leg yeah. that you can't put your weight on it. Means your leg don't work no more. You're really that's messed not, up. That's not nothing. You're you're hurt bad. You really messed up. But anyway, so Pike so Pike makes it into the palace by himself, and he fights his way up to Zach, the the mm -hmm. Starfleet guy that they left behind, who has made himself the king. And he's like, "Give us the memory I coffin." Think, I think they made him king. Oh, they made him king because he had the technology. He had like the phasers and stuff. He gave so, them all phasers. Um, yeah. Yeah. So he says, Pike says, give us back our memories. Where's the memory coffin? I want to drink my memories. I need to yeah. eat my memory back in my However head. However they're and stored. Yeah. Whatever it works. And Zach's like, you dipshit. There's no such thing as a memory coffin. It's just a and, myth. Ha, 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 and, ha, ha. And Pike tries to kill him. Pike almost does kill him. Oh, yeah, and, but so what happens? Knocks him so, around and, yeah. Yeah, as, as we probably, as most people watching the episode probably guessed, the way it works is the the castle, the palace shields the people it's inside made of it. Out of a special yeah. rock, it, it's, there's there's a radiation on the planet that causes An you to forget. An asteroid crash on the planet and gives yeah. off radiation that makes you forget, unless and of course you live inside the castle, right. which is made the out palace of a special protects material. you. That's right. Yeah. So once you've been in the palace for long enough, your memories come back because you're not being affected by the radiation anymore. Mm -hmm. So right before Pike is about to pull that trigger and blow Zach to kingdom come, he remembers and he puts the gun down and he says, I'm really mad at you, dude. I'm not going to kill you, though, because I remembered that I don't kill people. That's right, because my name is Christopher Pike and I don't kill That's people. That's right. I don't kill people unless they really, really have it coming. <laughs> He had um, it coming. Zach had it. He coming. did have it come. Zach totally had it coming. But anyway, uh, so Pike's like, I remember now, and you suck, and you're coming with me because I'm sorry I that I left you behind. I felt bad because I thought you were dead, yeah. but now I, I don't. thought you were dead. I feel I I was I mourned you because I thought you were dead, and I'm sorry for leaving you behind. But after that, all of the rest of this is your fault. But at so, least I'm not kicking you anymore. Yeah, I mean, because I, I mean, I wore you out, dude. I beat your ass, and I didn't even mm -hmm. have my memories, and I beat the shit out of you. And so, then Mbenga, you know, Mbenga fixes yeah. Lon. Yep, and and, uh, and then, Luke gets his memories back. Yeah, and he's like, and "Thanks for letting happy. me remember my dead family." He's crying, but he's happy that he got him back. Yes, right. yes, he realizes now that he does remember. He realizes that this was the right thing. That you and can't for just forget. You know. For some more reason, Ortega has to tell us in voiceover that she's the pilot. 
she's the pilot and everything's cool now and and pike says i'm gonna fix this planet and he yeah, gets the takes he has the some right away yeah. yeah he has some shuttlecraft tractor beam it off the planet and then ortegas grabs it with the tractor beam from the enterprise and throws it into the, it back in the yeah into the the, the belt around the mm. planet with the rest of them and he's like all right job well done goodbye everybody goodbye uh, and they and leave then and that's he gets oh, back together he, with his yeah. girlfriend that's and right he they captain patel comes back yeah mm. and he's like thanks for the necklace sucker and that's it the and, end and that's the end of the episode so what did you think what did you think of this one we almost got an ortegas episode they act like <laughs> it's an Ortegas episode. She intros the beginning and she outros right. the ending, but very yes. little of it had anything to do no. with her. But she does friend. save the day for the Enterprise. Yeah, that's great. All of them will save the day for the Enterprise at some point, won't they? I mean, that's okay. what they're, they're, I don't feel like it. Look, you're the one. They're, they're, I just, they're I, the I, best listen. of the best. Okay. You're 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 the one, and it's not just you. It's a lot of people who are like, "Where's the Ortegas episode?" This entire episode could have been an Ortegas episode. It right? could have been, yes. It could. They have fly. Been. They fly into a debris field. All of a sudden, everyone starts losing their memories. Mm -hmm. We we establish something with Ortegas that is a you know a little bit more. We didn't get anything from her. We knew. We know she's the pilot, right? We know she's so what, very you, competent you, as you, the pilot. So you, you just, I mean, I don't, like, you've said this before. I still don't, I mean, do you need to know, like, where she went to fucking high school? Like, no, what do you I need? What more to, do you need to know about I her? I want her to have something. Something that okay. she I, does or regrets or, you know, whatever. She's she's the only, I think she's the only crew member outside of Ohura I know Rua has had episodes about her, about we her know a learning bit about something, it, yeah. about yeah. her learning I'm, something, and discovering I, yeah. something about themselves, whatever. And I think we know, we know we learned in season one that Uhura's family, her parents were killed mm -hmm. like when she was young or something. Yeah. 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 And this could have been something about her. This could have been something more about Ortegas. They hinted at it with her whole, you know, flying the ship can get boring and I never get to go on away missions or anything like that. Right. And she could have gone on the away mission and then learned that she don't like him that much. But instead, uh, what yeah, she, could have. she says what she learned was, I'm the pilot. And I think that's as far as the writers have for her character. Oh, Ortega, okay, I... she's the pilot and she's, she says smart alecky things. And that's it. And it's kind of like, no, you do, we can't do that. <laughs> we can't do that with this, with this type of show. She, I'm fine. We, I'm I'm completely fine with it. Like I'm I, I, like I, like I've said, I, okay, and we disagree on that. Like I said, before, like I've said before, she's one of my very favorite characters on the show. How? Because I don't need to know her backstory. I don't need to. I I I, I get her. She comes across to me through her interactions with the other characters and through the performance mm -hmm. of Melissa Navia. I feel like I know her as a person, even though I don't know her background or her biography or what she does in her spare time. I get a sense of who she is from yeah, what we but, see of her. And of course, I'm curious. Of course, I'd love to see more. I'd love for them to do an Ortegas episode. I don't, I don't care. Give like a shit I about need her. it to like the character. Yeah. I don't need I don't give a shit about her background. You've established her character. Now do yes. something with it. Otherwise, there's no reason for her to exist other than snark and then come back out again. It's like, OK, so we don't have to invest anything into this character because you guys haven't. If she doesn't develop, if she doesn't grow, if there isn't something more substantive to her, give her something to do, to experience, to struggle through something. Instead, it's like, I'm the best pilot in the world, not <laughs> okay. going. And it's like, okay, <laughs> all right, just give her something to do, right? Okay. I, and that's I, my complaint. Yeah. It is not about me needing to know what happened to her parents or you know something, unless it, 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 it involves her developing and growing as a character. Otherwise, she's a cartoon, and I don't, you know, she's one of the Scooby gang. They never had to go through anything either, which is why after three episodes of the fucking Scooby Doo show, I was like, okay. Uh, you know, I get it. I, didn't, I get it. She needs to go. We need to have her. Something challenges her. Something, she overcomes right. something. She, okay. Well, you we, know. 
we 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 see that differently. What about what about the rest of the episode, other than the Ortega stuff or Let's lack thereof? Was, what it was fine. It was another hey, something fucked up about the planet, and we find out what's fucked up about the planet, <laughs> and then and then our characters overcome what's fuck what's fucked up about the planet. That, right? that they do. That they do. And, and they learn something about themselves. Unlike Ortegas, who just <laughs> discovered, oh boy, I fly the ship. <laughs> yep. Well, I liked it. I thought it was a good episode. I thought it was a good episode. I wouldn't say it was a great episode. I wouldn't say I love yeah. the episode. Um, again, the episode looks great. You know, yes. And and you uh, met, you mentioned the uh, the exteriors, the way they have that they have that wrap they, around they like obviously, giant video they wall. They obviously yeah, like, have the volume at this point, or yeah, and something comparable to the volume, whatever they call whatever. Yeah, whatever they. But yeah, that mm-hmm. allows them to create these environments that you know, like you said, this if this was a TOS episode, mm-hmm. you know, this would have been like an obvious soundstage. Oh yeah, set. Yeah. You know, a TOS with, or even a TNG episode. or even TNG. That's true. That's true. They yeah. they did the same thing with like the sound. The in, it was like, the, the oh look, stage another alien. planet where the sky is green and there are rocks. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. Big rocks just Big kind of rock. scattered around. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But I mean, it's another hey, something's fucked. And at least they kind of cued it in and said, hey, you guys kind of fucked up, and you guys you can take care of it. Yeah. You know, and they go down there and they do stuff, and you know, Pike's got stuff that he's got to work through with his girlfriend, and you know. There's mm-hmm. stuff there. There's here's my here's here's what I mean. Pike has a lot of stuff that we know about, right? Yes. He's got this thing looming over his head. He's got this girlfriend problem that he <laughs> that's going on. He defended yeah. Una, which may mean that he's you know got some bad stuff going on with Starfleet. Una right. is an augment, and she grew up weird, and people judge her and all that stuff. Um, Laan has family problems because she's descended from from a notorious Hitler Con. guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She has is trying to overcome the fact that she has been you know, she's kind of stuffed her emotions down. We all know about Spock's shit. We you know, we even have some character development with uh Mbenga with his daughter in season one. That's and true. the fact that he can be a very violent man that we're now discovering this season. <laughs> Nurse Chapel is, you know, she's. I don't know what's going on with. She loves Spock. That's all they've. She's, given she, her she's really. after Spock. She's after yeah. Spock. They haven't really gotten given her a whole lot more than other than, you know, she knows what what's went on with the Mega during the war. Apparently, right. she did. Well, I mean, too. the thing, and, and, and yeah, I mean, Chapel isn't all that different from the way Chapel is in the in the original series. It's just that in this show, no. she's played by an actor with you know charisma and screen presence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I can't believe how much you hate Major Barrett. I really can't. <laughs> it's nothing personal. Really, I know. No, she's dead. How can it's you nothing hate personal. that much? It's just that she's not very good and she's all over about the first 30 years of the franchise. It's like you can't get the what, fuck away from her. And she's te- awful. What teacher that she's like molested you when you were younger that you hate her so much? I don't get it. None. I was never molested okay. by teachers. All right. You sure? She's a lot like Sister Mary Patrick at Catholic school. No, I'm oh, kidding. there we go. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what I'm saying is, is that everyone now, Ortega. Yes. Oh my God. No, honestly, honestly, at this point, out of all of the characters that are on the show, please I'm not tell argue- me something I'm not- about Ortega. <laughs> I love that this has become a referendum on one character in the show. I'm, I'm not angry arguing because I with thought you. we were going to not... be getting something that was like solely I'm... focused on her, that we would learn something. And I'm not arguing with you about any of the facts that you are putting <laughs> forward. OK, I agree with you. We don't know very much about Ortegas in terms of her life or what she does when she's not on duty or whatever. Mm-hmm. The 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 where we differ on her is I don't feel like I need any more than I have been given so far to care about her and find her interesting and look forward to seeing her on the show. I if feel she like died yeah. in the next episode. Would you give a shit? Yes, of course. She's like my second Why? favorite character on the show. How because is she I, your second favorite? Oh my God. She's not. You I would say even after, die. after, after Pike, she's probably my second favorite character because, because I always find her entertaining and interesting. 
mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. likable. And mm-hmm. I think she had, I, I like her dynamic with Pike. I like her dynamic with Uhura, although we only got a little bit of that last season, but she has, we have seen her interact with the other characters mm-hmm. and it gives you, it gives you a sense of who she is as a person of her personality. Mm-hmm. And I like her and I find her entertaining. Mm-hmm. And if she, and look, like I've told you before, I, I hope there is an Ortegas episode. I would like to find out more yeah. about her, but here's the thing. If she does, and I don't think this is going to be the case, but if this is the case and she does remain just a supporting character who just flies the ship and interacts with the other characters, I don't necessarily think that's the worst thing in the world. Now, Mm -hmm. I would like for her to be, I would like for her to be more than that because Mm -hmm. I like the character, but if she continues to be entertaining the way she is, I'm Mm -hmm. not, I mean, I don't think that's necessarily bad writing. Maybe that's just the kind of character she is. You, You like her more than Spock. I don't know. Maybe I do like Spock more than that. Maybe she's number three. Because I do really like, because I do, I really, I really like Ethan Peck's yeah. Spock. He's really good. And he has, um, he has a good uh, line early in this one. It's when Ortegas is finding out that she's not going to be able to go on the away mission. And mm-hmm. Spock mentions, he, he tells her about the, the, you know, the asteroid belt that's around the, the planet that they're going to have to deal with. And, mm-hmm. uh, and Ortega, I think Ortega says, like, well, where, where, where did the asteroids come from? Or, you know, and, and Spock says, most likely a large celestial body collided with the planet some time ago. And Ortega's kind of rolls her eyes yeah. and says, celestial body, um, can't you just say moon? And Spock mm-hmm. says, I could, but that would be jumping to a conclusion. And mm-hmm. he says it with like, without a hint of irony or self-awareness, and it's perfect. And it's mm-hmm. so funny. Um, he's great. He's, he's great. great in this role. He's great. My whole yeah. thing is, hey, Steve. Yes. What does Ortegas like? I don't know. What does she not like? I don't know. Mm. You know what she likes? She likes flying the ship. Apparently, because they had to say it 15 times during this you know episode. What she do- you know what she doesn't like? <laughs> Being left yes. out of away missions. I guess so. I guess so. This whole, what I mean is, is that with a little bit more effort, this could have been an, an episode about Ortegas. I could and I think I what, could have, right. what could have challenged her was uh, of everyone on board the ship because of a weirdness about her brain. She was the only one that wasn't losing her memory. They could have gone that way. They could have. It could have just been an Ortegas episode, you know, yes. kept everyone on the ship, make it another ship episode, another model episode. We don't have to go down to Rigel 7, whatever. Not even make it Rigel 7. They could right. have done. They could have done a completely different episode than the episode they did. Yes, you were yeah, right. They could have done a completely <laughs> different episode than what they did. But where the entire ship has lost their memory, and now it's up to her to do all of this stuff. And it could have revealed that maybe she's so quick quippy because she's very, very, you know, um, yeah. You know, she doesn't she have has a some kind of unique of, brain chemistry. Up, or no, I mean, but what I mean is, is that she you know harbors some sort of who knows uh, she's afraid of her own abilities she that maybe she secretly feels she doesn't measure up maybe she's not as cocky as she pretends to be it's covering up something and you know an insecurity of some sort something fucking human that we can <laughs> relate to okay uh, otherwise She's just the quippy robot on the cartoon show, and I want her. I would like to see her be something other than that. Give her some emotion. Okay. 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 I mean, that's okay. all I'm demanding at this point. <laughs> now, <laughs> yes. If I were, if I were going to review the episode we actually watched, yeah, I like the episode. It was fine. It was I fine. It was, I agree with you. I don't think it was like an all time great or anything. No. I don't think it was as good as last week's or as good as like the very best that we've seen from this show or from any of the current shows. But I mm-hmm. thought it was very good. Mm-hmm. And it reminded me of an original series episode. You right, know, it's me a of classic, a TNG episode, actually. That, very much so, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a classic situation where, they, you know, oh, hey, look, the aliens look just like humans. Mm-hmm. And nobody mentions it which I absolutely love. And again, I've said many times, I wish that new that newer Star Trek shows would do that more often. I realize it's tempting because now it's more affordable to do to do a, a prosthetic design for aliens, you know, and make them look more alien like that's more, you know, within the budget now, which which is great. But there's just something Star Trekky about 
They show up at a planet and, mm-hmm. oh, look, it, it's it's full of aliens that look exactly like us. Mm-hmm. Or they look exactly like us, except they have like a little mark on their face or, you know, and also or whatever. Another, like, I love that. It's another episode where a, a Starfleet officer has gone bananas. That's true, which again, that happened a couple of times on Classic Trek. Mm-hmm. And I think it happened once or twice on TNG at least, or, or um, uh, maybe um, a bit on TNG. But, TNG, but, I, but we had a lot of people doing weird things. I've got to be in, young uh, to be able to negotiate this, this treaty yeah. between two people. Why do you have to be young? Shut up. I just do. <laughs> But yeah, and also, and also, and not only that. So the the setup of you know going to an alien planet, the people all look like us. It's a Starfleet officer that has gone wrong, and you know and caused all these problems. Up everything, yeah. And also, it's a classic. Oh, everybody loses their memory episode, I, which when, Star Trek has we, done in the past. I TNG did one. I don't remember them doing it. I on don't think EOS. I don't think original series ever quite did one, but. Um, but TNG did one, mm-hmm. uh, Deep Space Nine did one. Mm-hmm. I don't remember if Voyager did one Wait, or not. Did but, DS9 but, do one? Yeah, DS9 um, did the one where they didn't lose their memories, but they got it was the the one in season one where they all got like their they got infected by like the the um, it was the one I like the the cheesy one, um, uh, Dramatis Personae, where Yo. remember Cisco builds the clock. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so they don't forget, but they just they become different people, kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, but and also, I mean, like, and not just Star Trek, like there's lots of action adventure sci fi fantasy shows that have the mm-hmm. everybody forgets episode. You know, there was um, a, a, like a Lois and Clark did one where everybody forgets who they are. Um, Angel did an episode where they all forget who they are. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like, a, I think and actually I think I think Buffy the Vampire Slayer did one. Wait, so Buffy TNG, and Angel both did yeah, one. TNG did that one when the. Yeah. Ro Laren and and Riker yeah. wind up having sex. And it sex. turns out it's like, yeah, and it turns out it's like a ploy by these aliens to try and get mm-hmm. the Enterprise to attack their enemies because there's the one guy on the ship yeah. who 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 think who tries to trick them into thinking he's part of the crew, but actually he's mm-hmm. just a new guy that nobody. And the whole remembers audience that knows that he's every, that he's an imposter. <laughs> Wait, it's that guy. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, it's that guy. But um, mm-hmm. but yeah, so it, it's you know it's. Strange New Worlds doing its spin mm-hmm. on its this take on that. familiar right. trope, yeah, mm-hmm. which it has done several times already, and which I again, I like they've they, so far they've always found an inventive twist. Sure. You know, it's it doesn't feel like they're just all oh, they're doing this that the other show did. They they find their own twist on it, and it works very well. I thought um, I like. There's just a little hint of political commentary, not very much, but there's just that idea of, oh, there's the people that are in charge and then the people that they exploit. There's the people in the palace and the people in the field mm-hmm. um, and that this is not a viable system and that is not this is not a fair system. Mm-hmm. There's the, you know, the thematic stuff about how like uh, it's sort of like, you know, the Star Trek five, you know, don't take away my pain. I need my pain. Mm-hmm. Um, but but also Pike saying uh you know when you it takes away your memories but in doing so it tells you who you really are because you mm-hmm. don't have your memories you just have who you instinctively are yeah um which is a little bit reminded me a little bit of dark city because there's a little bit of that in a dark city bit, like if, yeah. if if you can't remember who you are if you can't remember your life well then who are you mm-hmm. you know like are you a product of your experiences or is there something innate in you that makes you who you are mm-hmm. that's sort of that philosophical question uh that this episode deals with a little bit and mm-hmm. yeah and, and there's just it's just an inherently compelling dramatic situation where you, you put the characters in a situation where it's like oh shit, everybody forgets who they are and what they can do how are they going to get out of this situation you know and especially when they introduce the element of oh it's happening on the enterprise too so there, you don't have that convenient of, oh, you know, Pike and La'an and, and Benga are going to fuck around on this planet for an hour. And then at mm-hmm. the end, you know, Spock's going to swoop in and get him out of there. Like, nope, that's not how it works. It's happening on the ship, too. So they have to solve their problem and Pike and the others have to solve their problem. So I mm-hmm. like the way it was structured. Yeah. Um, and it was Me nice. Too. It's nice. It's nice to see Anson Mount back, you know, off of his uh, parental leave. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, and thanks everyone for center reminding stage us, again. for telling us that he was on a parental leave. And all yeah. I have to say is, you take your trek seriously as an actor, and you don't have children. <laughs> while you're on the show. You can have a family, or you can be on Star Trek. Anson, I'm it's kidding. Your choice. I'm kidding. Thanks, no. thanks, thanks, everybody. Uh, of the, a lot of everybody's for letting us know. For the, that- he was on parental leave. Okay.
Yeah. Thank you. But yeah, and 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 I like I, I like cool. that they're sticking, and I like that they're sticking with uh, Captain Battelle because I like her too. Yeah, she's you know? alright. Yeah, and we know that it doesn't work out. We know for a fact it doesn't work out because it's not like he didn't have anybody with him in uh, the menagerie when when he he was just sitting by himself on that, you know. Oh no, he goes chair. racing back into what's her name's arms. Oh, he goes to to Vina. Yeah. Yeah, Vina's arms. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the only other thing uh, I made a comment on in regards to this episode, and I think we can probably wrap it up on this, is uh, yeah. once again, we had a captain uh, trot out. Being a captain's lonely. You have to think of your, uh, your crew first. And, you know, right. do, we, there's no room for relationships and blah, 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 blah. In which case, I always will say that's why Cisco is the greatest captain. Because he found a way to make it work. Because he did both, motherfuckers. He did he, both. He not only did he lose a wife, but he then he raised a son by himself. That's right. Man, you know, was the captain. Well, eventually became the captain of a star. Yeah. Of a, of was a star the command base. was the, the 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 leader of a star base. Yeah. Led a war against the Dominion. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, and won that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. All That's while right. at the same time being a loving dad. That's there for his son. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Raised his son up right on a shithole space station. Meanwhile, all the other captains and almost every single captain is like, yes. yeah, I can't have a relationship and be captain because I have to be there for well, my crew. Yeah. Do you know what do you, do you know what else was different about Cisco? What? We have well, we haven't really I'll say we haven't really seen this specific quirk from Pike yet, but mm-hmm. Kirk had it, Picard had it to a degree, not as bad as Kirk. Uh, I mm-hmm. think even Janeway had a little bit. They all get like weird fixations about their ships. Yeah, they do. They fall in love with their ships like their ships however, are However, however, yeah. the movies with Kirk clearly showed who what's more important to Kirk. Clearly yes. showed oh, what's yes. more important because to Kirk. It's not the he, ship. Yeah, because he okay. sacrifices the ship to save his friends. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's bummed about it, but he also recognizes that that was the only thing he could do. It's just a ship um, in the long yeah, it's run. It's just it's ultimately, just it's ship. just a ship. Mm-hmm. So, so, and Cisco never really has that either for the station or for the Defiant. I mean, there is there's a he point likes late the in Defiant, the, but I mean that's about and, it. And there's a there's a point late in the series when Cisco has an, an epiphany and he realizes that he has come to think of Deep Space Nine as home. Mm-hmm. But that's about as close as he gets. He doesn't. It doesn't seem like he has like, you know, the kind of like when when Kirk was losing his was losing it in the naked time, and mm-hmm. he like starts talking to the Enterprise like it's a person. Like, I'll never <laughs> lose touching you. it. I'll never lose you. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. like you never get that. So Cisco maybe has more room. And in with his Picard, you never family. felt like never felt like he loved the Enterprise. Not if like anything, Kirk did. He loved the Stargazer. That's true. But- not necessarily Maybe, the, yeah. I mean, they kind of in Picard yeah. season three, he kind of makes illusions that this was his favorite ship, but I'd be like, well, but that's no, because I've heard you go on yeah. about the Stargazer. The reason why like, the reason why Picard in Picard season three says the Enterprise D is his favorite ship is because it's the people watching the show's favorite ship. Yeah. Um, if you think about Picard as a person, as a real person living in a real world, why wouldn't mm. the Stargazer be his favorite ship? He was on that ship for 20 years. 20 years. He was only on the Enterprise D for seven years. He was only he on the Enterprise E for about it, seven or eight. He says you know. it to Scotty. He says, you know, in yeah. all aspects, the Enterprise is a far more advanced ship, yeah. but he misses the Stargazer. Yeah. There are times when I would give it all up to be on the Stargazer again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, you know, but... But anyway, yeah. Uh, but it may. But the thing is, it's the classic, you know, lone, the, the lone th- hero thing. I don't and, think we're going to get yeah. a, an episode. Pike was talking about the burden of command, but you'll notice that he doesn't say that I'm married to the ship. He talks about his no. crew. His He's crew loyal to his thing. crew. Yeah, and that comes that comes across with Pike very strongly, and you get that from Kirk a little bit too. But not to the point like like Pike really seems like he cares about his crew on a personal level. Yeah. You know, not not just duty, not just I'm the captain and it's my job to take care of these people, but he seems like he genuinely personally cares about the people on his ship. Mm-hmm. Um, which you don't really get from Kirk. I mean, Kirk 
you know, has the sense of duty. And I think and he's, we see that we see that he's close to certain people or you Picard. don't get that. Picard's Picard, that's entire true. arc is about him going yeah. from I don't really like anybody to the very end. <laughs> the very no, it's yeah. a, it's a decent sitting arc. in at the poker game. Yeah, sitting it's a great in a arc. Absolutely. Game at the end of yeah. the at the end of this thing is that he acknowledges yeah. that accepting they are, them as friends. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, that's um, so, enough. Well, yeah. So episode anyway, was good, all right. good, good episode, good yeah. episode, mm -hmm. and good Pike episode, and uh, good almost Ortegas episode. <laughs> good um, almost so, Ortegas episode. Yeah. They're all good Ortegas episodes, buddy. Shut um, your filthy mouth. Anyway, so we'll be back. <laughs> we'll be back next week for a review of episode five, hopefully. Or not, because we're going to argue about Ortegas <laughs> gonna argue. for another we're gonna three have... hours after we're done. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit stop on this recording, and we are going to have such a huge fight about Ortegas. You have no Ooh, idea. But, who's going to no, be um... back next week? Who knows? <laughs> well, I'm reviewing the show solo this week. You know what uh, I do want? You know what I do want? Yeah. Yes. I would like to see. Mm -hmm. I would like to see another Harcourt Fenton Mud with a different actor. Oh, like not so not bring back Rain Wilson. Just no, I did not like, like Rain. I did not like Rain Wilson as mm -hmm. Harcourt Fenton Mud. Um, they made him too violent. I think he was he, he was pretty violent in his. He uh, was he was supposed to be a scoundrel, a scallywag. You know. And he, now he's like, I'm going to use time travel to murder to the captain murder over and over and over, over again. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that I mean, this I do feel like the tone of this show is more suited to a character like Harry Mudd. Me too. Because the first season of Discovery was so dark, and it was like mm -hmm. this, Harry Mudd is you know kind of a lighthearted character and mm -hmm. he would fit much better with this show than he would with the uh, yeah. with, he would have with discovery at that who, point who don't know steve who is my favorite star trek character harry mudd that's right harry mudd. harry mudd yeah i think he was underutilized i know that gene roddenberry wanted was proposing a a uh, spin-off series of just about harry mudd which i think mm -hmm. would have gone a long way to kind of flesh out the the universe that Star Trek inhabits and show you like the non Starfleet side of it. Oh yeah, you imagine show it to all you this... from through through the eyes of someone who is like on the opposite side of the, the law from by expo Starfleet. exposing yeah. people to the scumbags, criminals, and all the other unscrupulous non Federation, yeah. you know, places that you know Starfleet doesn't really have a grip. You know, the yeah. Orion the Orion Syndicate is a thing. Imagine what other things we could get you know other planets that don't want anything to do with starfleet and how they yep. get by because they've got to coexist alongside them but you know that would require imagination to do something <laughs> without starfleet and assuming that you wouldn't be playing the role yourself oh of course i would, would always need... We we would need to find someone the a proper heir to Roger Carmel to to play the role. Come, come on, I'm about his shape. That's I true. have a I have a tooth gap. Facially, you're yeah, you're in the you're in the ballpark. You know, I what just I mean? haven't. I don't have the receding hairline like he did, like he has. Well, we we can fix that. But you know, I just dropped my my voice two octaves lower, and, <laughs> and there you I are. I'm a <laughs> Kirk, friend Kirk. Anyway. Anyway, thanks um, for watching, everybody. We'll let see us know you. what you thought yes. about it down in the comment yeah. section. Because yeah. I read them. Steve doesn't care, but I think they're interesting. I read them when I approve them. Oh, good. And then golly. I and then I pick I pick out all the ones that are say nice things about you and I delete them. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. <laughs> so it looks like I'm right. Mm -hmm. so no i seriously i don't do that so please yes please let us know what you thought uh about the episode and uh we'll see you next week for our review of episode five bye, bye everybody